Welcome back everybody, this is your boy C Brunner and we're back with more Honkai Siren. So, in our previous episode, the one hour long special, we managed to beat the boss in a lot. So if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's a lot of epic. But now let's let's hop back to the story and see how it, no, everything it unfolds and I like to the aftermath of everything just happened. Here I am rambling on, proving you right again. If only you were here to cut me off. I thought she'd return. Did the Helm Master send you over? We are here to help sort out Miss Ting Yun's things. Madam Yukong wants to use some of them for her soul soothing ceremony. Well, I've managed to get through pretty much everything. It's all in this box. Please take your time. Okay, let's see what there is. Capacitor seal, a small box, a knife, a bow, and something wrapped up tight. I wonder what this is. Looks like some kind of antique? But who'd want to hold on to something like this? Oh, Ting Yun explained that one to me. It's a folk statuette from Foxy in Antiquity. They say it can bring wealth if placed correctly. There's also a note in the package. This is for you, Mr. Yen Ming. Wishing you fortune and success in every endeavor. Yen Ming, it seems like this is a gift for you from Miss Ting Yun. I, I remember asking her for one at the time. Is unexpected. I, I only mentioned it in passing, but she remembered. Ting Yun and I were from different guilds. We were competitors, but also colleagues. When we used to trade in other lands, we would bring back local specialties and distribute them among friends and other guild members. It became a custom. The rivalry between us and the Whistling Flames to be the Skyfaring Commission's top guild was always fierce. We would gift each other all kinds of bizarre oddities. Candy that made your leg hair grow. A violin that could shatter glass with its piercing shriek. Oh, I was completely unprepared for this. I never thought Ting Yun would leave something behind for me that was so sincere and earnest. Somebody gave me candy to make me like her girl. Like, hey, that girl was prank or not? You did not do that. That was messed up. If I don't return a gift, I'll lose our little duel. But what could I possibly gift her back? Just kidding. 
kidding. <laughs> Just trying to liven things up around here. Do you know where we're supposed to take these things? But yeah, besides that, her part in the plot, I won't spoil it if you haven't seen it. But her, her part of the plot, how it went down, was actually really sad. So you might want to see that, because if you don't understand what's happening. The Sleepless Earl. Was that the name of that tea house at the port when we first got into town? Welcome to the Sleepless Earl. I'm the owner here. The name's Ming Ming. How many of you are there? Which tea would you like today? Oh, this is, this is the tea Miss Ting Yun promised to get for me. She really went to another world for me. She's incredible. When I took over this tea house from my parents, I thought I'd shake things up by creating a new tea product. Famous brews like Whale Tide Spring or vegetations in the Alchemy Cauldron have been around for millennia, and imported mixed teas have also found a niche. Introducing a new product into the industry is really hard. Miss Ting Yun came to the tea house one day and heard about my troubles. She said she could find me a brand new strain during her travels, one that nobody on the CNJO had ever tasted. I just thought she was trying to cheer me up. I never thought she'd actually do it. Where is Miss Team Yun today? Yes, now that the crisis has been averted and the ports are resuming operations, Miss Team Yun has been dispatched on business with the Skyfaring Commission out to other worlds. Oh, really? Hmm, well, that's a shame. Well, Hold on a sec. Based on her suggestion, I improved the Whale Tide Spring, Emerald Hills, and Dawn Dew strains to make a new variety with a sweet, long-lasting taste. I called it Ting Yun's Blend. Seeing as she can't enjoy it right now, I'll have to invite all of you to try a cup. Was I supposed to tell them the truth or not? I feel like it's easier to just be like, Even she's out memories. of the world. She's on mission's up off. Every moment is like a thorn rose. Don't forget to let your friends in on the action. Oh, how's it going? Did you take some time off? See any? Isn't that the place on Aurum Alley over an exalting sanctum? All the foodies go there. What about it? Planning on treating me to a feast? It's the main commercial street in the Exalting Sanctum, although it's a lot quieter since the whole Stellaron crisis thing. Tourists fresh off the Starskip always head to Starwatcher Avenue in Starskip Haven. It's one of those bustling tourist streets. But if you want the real deal on local snacks, you've got to get to Aram Alley. I've marked it out for you on your map. Whenever I'm tired of Celestial Jade or slacking off, I head over for a bowl of Granny Chen's tofu. Darn it, now that you've brought it up, I suddenly don't feel like clocking in for work anymore. Well, it's famous for its mung bean soda. You've got to give it a try. Get for you today? Uh, something from Miss Ting Yun. Uh, oh, uh, what a precious person she is. Uh, a sweet thing like her gifting me a kitchen knife. When she first ate here, I told her my motto you can't better your own food unless you taste it. <laughs> then she got me to talk about my hunting and cooking experiences out on other worlds. 
she was captivated. She pestered me about dish after dish. At the end, she mentioned she wanted to get me a gift. A sword for a hero and a knife for a chef. <laughs> That's how she put it. She probably came across some rare mineral and forged it by hand. <sighs> Look how sharp it is. I bet it cuts straight through a Lhasa titanium terrapin shell. <sighs> Miss Tingyun is too kind. Who among the Aram Ali vendors hasn't been spoiled by the generosity of whistling flames? Her grand fair puts small merchants like us in touch with big intergalactic vendors. If we're talking gifts, it's us who should be gifting her something. Oh, I heard the trade port is open again for business. Miss Tingyun must be real busy, right? Miss Tingyun couldn't tear herself away from work, so we've had to gift this on her behalf today. Oh, really? Thank you so much. Why don't I give you all a demonstration and prepare a dish? My treat. I'd love to repay this kindness. Oh, speaking of which, it was our chili beef awful stew that first attracted Miss Tingyun to our restaurant. <laughs> it's spicy, sumptuous, and guaranteed to get the mouth watering. Not even a girl as refined as Ting Yun could resist the temptation. About that bow, I think I know who Miss Ting Yun intended to gift it to. Mr. Yan Ming said an Ami Cassiter will return with a gift for a trusted colleague. The person who Ting Yun trusts the most is Madame Yu Kong, right? you here. out its arc of recovery and continued to trade. I felt tired of voyaging, like I'd lost the courage to pull on a bowstring ever again. I hid away in the Skyfaring Commission and buried myself in work, never wanting to see the sky again. Despite rising to Helmmaster, my military career hadn't prepared me for the type of meticulous planning work now confronting me. King Yun, on the other hand, was a born merchant, always discussing business matters with me and offering up advice, even if she was my subordinate. She never fought alongside me on the battlefield, but in her 
own way. She became a comrade in arms. Without the help of Ting Yun and the guild, the Law Fu would not have been able to recover in the space of just 30 short years. I used to think that the Xian Zhou had changed with the times. Geniuses like Ting Yun were the future for the Skyfaring Commission's next generation. They would bring prosperity to the Law Fu. I was only ever suited to the flames of war. Minions of the Antimatter Legion are wiped out. Will I become useless to the Xianzhou? The Xianzhou needs people like me. Those willing to cruise the sky and fight the flames. The Star Skiff is ready for the ceremony now. Everyone, please place your objects aboard the Star Skiff. Wait! Wait, wait for me! Yun prepared a gift for me. As a fellow Amicassador, I cannot fail to honor our custom. Yan Ming, what is it that you've prepared? I... I've brought a paper kite. I know it may seem simple compared to the precious items that Ting Yun gifted others in the past, but... It has a deeper meaning. I heard that Foxians have a tradition where paper kites are used to comfort the souls of pilots who can no longer take to the skies. Ting Yun and I were never pilots in the strictest sense of the word, but we spent much of our lives out among the stars. For her to be able to take wing once again would make her very happy. It's actually really powerful. Hmm. Out of all this stuff we've got, what do you think we should place on the star skiff? This time, we needn't compete. Go. Fly on to other distant worlds. Everything you've done for the Skyfaring Commission and the Law Fu. This small seal is the foundation of the Xian Zhou's prosperity. This is a gift from Miss Yen Sui on behalf of all the restaurants on Arum Alley. You're going to love this. This is the tea that Meng Ming has made, especially named after you. The Skyfaring Commission shall never forget you, Ting Yu. I'll seek out the truth, and if it is discovered that you were taken from us, I swear to avenge your unjust end. It is time for the soul-soothing ceremony. Please make your way to Earthrise Agora in Starskiff Haven. I really hope we finally get an answer to what happened to her, but I know that um, their last live stream for the update they didn't hint at anything or said anything in particular, so I guess we still don't know. finished. You should take a rest. Not yet. I have things I wish to convey to my astro friends. My apologies, I couldn't get to you any sooner. Yen Ching made sure that I was fully recuperated. Before you leave the Law Fu, there are two things I wish to gift the Express. Uh, two gifts? Has his conscience finally gotten the better of him? Is he going to make up for all our hard work along the way? 
please. Let us reconvene at the seat of divine foresight. I mean, I figured if you already told us you're gonna give us two gifts, might as well just give them to each us here. That make us walk over across the whole map for God knows what it's gonna be. What is your purpose for entering? to reiterate the Sienjo Lafu's esteemed gratitude for the magnanimous actions of the nameless. I am sure Lady Fu has given voice to this already, but the Lafu is greatly indebted to you. Therefore, on behalf of the Lafu Cloud Knights, I hereby present you with a jade abacus, a symbol of our allied friendship. Back when the Alliance was first established, all those thousands of years ago, the Sienjo ship swore an oath, etching the record into a jade abacus. The world may crumble, and the heavens may fall, but this oath shall never be broken. The same is true of this jade abacus. It is a record of the Law Fu Cloud Knight's promise to the crew of the Astral Express. It is also a beacon. Grip it tightly, and it will send a message to the Jade Abacus here, in my hand. No matter how astronomically distant you are, the Lawfu Cloud Knights will always come to the aid of the crew, whatever your need may be. Wow, now that's what I call a payoff! <clears throat> of course, I trust that such an important article will not be used for trivial or inappropriate circumstances. I hope you can understand. Yep, got it. Say no more, sure thing. Thank you for your generosity, General. I mean, he's not wrong. We Don't proved know. that we were one of the strongest people in his own army. General. So, like, we can't just call it the reason. edict of the Ten Lords Commission, I am hereby authorized to relieve your banishment decree. From this day henceforth, you may come and go freely. On the law food. Nice! But I must remind you that the crimes of Don Fong have had far reaching implications. And some people, such as those in Scale Gorge Waterscape, will not be much moved by the issuance of a paper edict. While I can guarantee your freedom to come and go as you please, I cannot guarantee your safety. Again, I hope you can understand. I understand. This issuing of gifts brings with it a sense of relief. Even my wound is feeling much improved. The occasion calls for a line or two of poetry. Um, though I feel my efforts would be overshadowed by the erudition of Lady Fu. Another time, perhaps. The Express and its passengers have a long voyage ahead of them. May that voyage be smooth and untrammeled. <laughs> I bid you farewell. Himiko messaged me. The Express detected the Jade Gate's reopening. She asked whether we'd be heading back anytime soon. She was also asking after you, Don Hung. I think it'd be best if you update her in person, don't you think? She must have been worried. I'll return to the train and put her mind at rest. Himeko must be eager to hear about what we've been up to on this mission too, right? Uh, hang on. Oh, how could I forget? We should bring something back for the conductor. Have you got any unfinished business on the Sienjo? I think I'm just gonna go all straight on to the oh, next one. Got goldfish memory. We have and then just come back and everyone we met 
explore this all screen. So for the sake of the thing, right, story, I'll just Don skip and I will go back to the express. The two of you come back soon, okay? <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Yang. Yeah, I think for the sake of content, I'm gonna continue back. I'm not sure where else to go, so I'll just continue the story to the next journey and see what happens. Dreamlike quality to watching these star skiffs depart through the Jade Gate. Just make sure comment down below if I miss something or you guys want me to do something on screen, and I'll try to do it in the next episode. From a universal perspective, there is little difference between the lives of long and short life species. The transcendence that the Sienjo pursues is nothing compared to the enduring majesty of the stars. And the grief felt here is no different from our own. But, alas, what could have been a magnificent saga was reduced to a few words and a grunt. Next time, I think I should be the one trailblazing with you guys. Welt can stay on the express. <laughs> Since when did the work roster just change like that? Penatoni, do you remember? Before Kafka's proposal, that was our original destination. The Express's records show that Penacony was a prison planet used by the IPC to exile criminals. At least, it was at the time of recording. However, following a Stellaron burst, the planet fell into the arms of Shipe. They say it's been transformed into a prosperous and ethereal realm. The family is throwing a banquet there, and they sent invitations out to the Express. I was curious about the state of the planet, so I accepted. When the conductor is ready, we can set off for the next stop. Well, we heard her. Our next stop is Petacani. So, let's see what happens now. <clears throat> All who enter here are either jailers or prisoners. Which are you? <laughs> Neither. I'm merely a lost traveler. Oh, what a spectacle. The Stellaron, the Ambrosial Arbor, the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, the Lord Ravager. A series of threats that almost succeeded in diverting attention away from the crucial question. They who brought the Stellaron onto the Sienjo. What was their motive? <laughs> Will you surrender, or do you require encouragement? Abomination of Yaosher. General, my power does indeed stem from the abundance. But I'm the same as you. We are both enemies of Yaosher. <laughs> That's right, Jing. Stay out of our way. The revival of the Arbor is an omen. It's time for the Sienjo to choose its next path. The Rainbow Arbiter, the Plague's author, the Ruin author. This is a chess game between eons. If you don't stand with the winners, you stand to lose. And this time, we will put the Abundance in their grave. That was an interesting cutscene. So I'm pretty sure that Xiang Yan, I don't know her name, Xiang Lu, it's next. So I'm definitely gonna pull for her and see if I can add it to the team.
head to the next stop. Let's meet up with everyone in the parlor car. I also forgot to say that I actually end up leveling up, but I'm gonna wait for this because I need to get better relics for the team. But once I get started, then I, when I get more situated, then I'll start leveling up again. to keep people on the edge of their seats. Mm -hmm. Apologies for the delay, dear passengers. Something important came up, so I, the conductor, had to spend some time preparing. I think this is a good stopping point. We learned a lot. We said our goodbyes. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. I'll be I'm starting to post more Conquest Several footage or content more often now. So comment down below your thoughts. 
comment down below who's your favorite character. But thank you for watching, and until next time, peace.